Riksha, let's get let's invite the guest of today, Francesca. Oh yeah, sure, definitely. So, in the dynamic and ever-changing field of IT, staying informed and gaining insights from experts is invaluable. That's why we are excited to bring you today's webinar featuring a leading voice in the industry. Our guest speaker has not only made significant contributions uh, to cloud engineering, but also continues to drive innovation and excellence. So I'm truly honored to introduce our guest for today's webinar, our guest, Francisca, who's a true limited as a cloud engineer with a wealth of knowledge and experience. Her impressive achievements and contribution to the field have earned her a well-deserved reputation. So we are fortunate to have her to share her insights and valuable perspectives. So everyone, please welcome Francisca. Hey, Francisca, how are you doing? I'm good, Naman. Hello, hello, everyone. Nice to be here. Hope you guys are doing okay. Yeah, I am sure. Now, after listening to your voice, I'm sure that everyone is super excited. Isn't it, everyone? <laughs> Can we welcome Francesca? Are you excited to listen to story of Francesca, like how she made it into a cloud engineer role? <laughs> awesome. So, Francesca, uh, like if you can just talk about like, you know, how you made it into IT and uh, how is it happening right now? Are you enjoying your current role? And if you can share some more details about it. Okay, yeah, no, man, thank you so much for this opportunity. It's always, uh, I always count it a privilege and a blessing to be, to be able to inspire other people who found themselves in the same position that I used to be some time back. My story is one that I would say is form of like an encouragement to any person who is thinking or doubting or thinking like, how do I make it? How do I survive in this IT world? How am I going to do it? Talking about how I started. First of all, I want to talk about where I come from. I come from a non-IT background, zero IT background, like tech savvy. You know, I, I wasn't a tech savvy at all. I used to work as a human resources analyst. And then I also work as a quality assurance engineer, but the quality assurance engineer is not in the IT domain. That was strictly in the food processing industry. So you see, it was completely different or it's completely different from IT. So it's nothing related to IT. Now, when I saw some people, some friends, my husband's uh, uh, friends, they were all in the IT field. I saw others drop out. Others were making it. I kept asking myself, how do I do it? I want to get into this thing, but I don't want to drop out. And I got in contact with Naman. We talked about it. I explained to him my situation. And he told me consistency is the key that you need. I had every reason. I started studies. I kept studying. I studied for more than six months started looking for the job, it wasn't coming. Mind you that I was heavily pregnant as at the time when I was doing my studies. Wow. With being pregnant, it, it it wasn't, I had every reason to give up, right? Like, you know, the pregnancy challenges that will come, how tired you can feel sometimes, you know, but I kept pushing, I kept pushing and I kept studying. After the pregnancy, I guess had my little baby and then it was still hard having a, being a new mom with a small in your hand, I had every reason to give up on it. But then I still didn't give up. I remember sometimes I would wake up in the night. I had a goal for myself. I had to drop in at least 10 applications every day. That was the minimum, like the smallest amount I had set for myself. This was after I was done with my studies. I had the baby. I was in the job market. I was seriously searching for the job. So I set a goal for myself that, Despite the fact I have a baby, let me put, it's challenging. It's, it's, it's a lot of work, the fatigue, the tiredness, taking care of the baby. I said, but then I still have to push myself. I kept on dropping those applications at least 10 every day, no matter what came up. I kept dropping. And as God will have it, I landed my first job two months after I had the baby. And that was a 100% remote job and the comfort of my home. 
the money is mind blowing. It turned around things for my family for the good, like for the better. Things change, you know. I am working in the comfort of the home. I still be able to take care of this small baby that I have. And I'm able to bring that support that my family needs to stand. I work, I kept working. The first few months were really be challenging, you know, having to manage all of this. But then that consistency, you know, that word kept coming to my mind. And today I am fine. I am relaxed. Six months down the road, I landed another job, making it two jobs. This is me that I was pregnant while studying. This is me that I had a baby. For anyone that is here that has a baby will know how challenging it can be. The stress, the baby is crying at night. You have to be awake. You need to do this. You need to do that. But I kept going. And today, I am comfortably sitting in the IT domain as an AWS cloud engineer. I am able to work in AWS uh, environment. I am able to do presentations about different topics. I am currently taking classes, you know, in the domain of um, artificial intelligence. Yeah, so, I know. yeah, that is that is what you you were you were attending the AI prompt one. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. So this is just to tell you that is listening to me that no matter what you are facing, you don't need to. Sorry about the noise in my background. You can hear my baby shouting on the other side of the room. No matter <laughs> what the situation is around you, consistency, keep pushing, keep pushing. You may have every reason to give up, but don't give up. Keep pushing, keep applying, keep studying, and keep studying. It's a never-ending process, right? Because you want to keep growing. The IT domain is changing. It's evolving. And yeah, you will make it just like I did and even better. Very nice. Very nice. Really inspiring, Francesca. And this is why, you know, I used to talk to you always. And uh, I always wanted to, you know, find one webinar to invite you because there are people over here who are learning with us. Uh, you know, they always have this question that whether am I doing a right thing in my life or not? Whether am I investing my time, efforts uh, and money on a right thing or not? But I think uh, just the way you said, you know, consistency is the key here, uh, which has helped you. So uh, one question what I want to ask on behalf of our audience that uh, in you're working on a cloud role right now, and there must be a little bit of uh, DevOps uh, tools you must be using. So, yes. what is that? What is what? What are those tools which you use on a regular basis? If you can just you know give us few names so that you know people are people people can you know work 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 on it. Like if you can just okay. talk about some tools. Okay, so in the side of the DevOps part, I have a project currently that I'm working on. It's an Ansible automation. Uh, project a project so this particular project that i'm currently working on is having everything to do with ansible platform and then on the other side of the tools that i use in terms of devops i've also been working with prometheus of where i'm using grafana and then i am also doing cicd and i'm using jenkins so these are some of the devops tools that i use almost frequently like most frequently if not Sorry about that. No, if no. not more, yeah, yes. Yeah. So I use Jenkins, CICD pipelines, Prometheus, Grafana, and then now I have this other new project that I'm working on, which is everything about Ansible, Ansible automation platform. Awesome, awesome. And the next question, Francisca, what I would again ask, uh, would like to ask you on behalf of our audience that how does the salary range looks like? Because all these people who come from a non-IT background or maybe a back background from IT, but they don't know. What is the salary structure looks like in cloud engineer, and what what can they demand from the from the recruiter? You know, so what do you think? What can be the salary range they can ask for? Okay, for so I always I, I always say that you are the one selling yourself, right? You are the one giving yourself value, and the value you give yourself is also with respect to how the salary is ranging in the market. Now you are coming in as an AW as a cloud engineer in general. You have to range yourself, let me say, from the hundred and ten thousand US dollar annually and above. Meaning, if you give hundred and ten, meaning that for you that should be 
for me anyway, that was the kind of like my minimum. I wasn't going for anything less than 110. You can go even as far as 155. In my first job that I had, I will tell you plain blank. I was I'm being I was given an offer letter with a hundred and fifty five thousand US dollars, wow. and the second one I landed it was a hundred and thirty thousand US dollars. So those two jobs put together can tell you the money I make annually. Now you sell yourself to the recruiter. Most of the mistakes I see some people do when they ask you when they ask them during interviews like, um, how much do we want to pay you? So some people will just rush off to tell a specific amount. Yes, have an amount. Don't have a specific amount. Give them a range that they can, that you know if they accept that range, you're comfortable with. For example, a recruiter asks you, um, how much are you anticipating or how much are you expecting for this job? So, okay, in terms of this job, this is, I am expecting, uh, I have a range, which is very much negotiable. I have a range of between, 125,000 to 180,000 US dollars. So anything that falls within this range, I am going to be comfortable with. Nevertheless, what does the company budgeted for this role? So that will give the recruiter or the, the, the rec hiring manager that you're discussing with an opportunity to talk on the salary. Mind you that you have already told them your range and you have asked them back another question like what did the company budget? When you're telling them your range, remember to say it is also negotiable. You understand? Mm -hmm. So that if this is your very first job you're looking for, you don't want to drive them away, right? You don't want to scare them with that big amount if it is not what they have budgeted. So that's why you tell them it is negotiable. So when they come back to you and be like, okay, the company budgeted between 90 to 120 or to 135, you'll be like, okay, yeah, that's fine. 135 marks that was budgeted, it falls within my range. So I can do it. Awesome. I mean, that's a that's a great input what you have given to us because many of our students, they come to us and say, hey, Naman, I have my recruiters round, which is the hiring manager round, and they're going to discuss about salary. What should I say? I'm so scared. And I think you have answered it very right that, you know, give them a range and uh, tell them that you are open for negotiation so that you don't drive them away. I mean, that's something, what is a great input, uh, Francesca, again, what you have given us. I think that is, again, going to be very helpful. You know, Francesca, I have seen that people, just because they are scared, they, mm -hmm. and they, they, are, they are so eager to get a job, they try to under, you know, they try to give the price, give the, give the salary, which is, which is too low. You know, some people are open, okay, I'm okay with 70,000 also, just give me an IT mm -hmm. job. You know, people are crazy about it. And the same recruiter is going to hire another person for one. Right. Years. So, so that is something what's happening right now. But it is very important that you give a reasonable, uh, you know, uh, a range so that it, it and the opportunity to the recruiter to decide. So I think that is, that is wonderful input what Francesca you have given to us right now. Amazing. And one mm -hmm. more thing, Francesca would, again, uh, would like to ask you. So right now, uh, like when you when you told uh, in the beginning that uh, you started, uh, uh, you started moving to IT, you started learning. It was a six month process. So before you started your six months of process of learning, what you were doing? I mean, uh, like when you were in okay. non IT, so what was your actual profession at that point of time? So before I before I started studying IT, I. I, back in my country, before I came to the United States of America, I used to work as a human resources analyst. So human resources analyst, I used to deal with personnel, people like people's files. I will make sure that we recruit the right people for the jobs that have been advertising our company. I make sure that all their files were properly arranged. I make sure I enter their information in our systems. I follow up payroll for for these employees. And there's something in my country called, um, here in America, they call it the social security service. Back in my country, it is also social security, but in the French, they call it CNPS. So I always make sure I followed up their CNPS uh, related things as expected, making sure they have their maternity benefits being paid, make sure if they are going on vacation, their vacations are being paid, make sure that if they are going on retirement, because we had so many workers that were retiring, and make sure that their retirement benefits have been paid. That was before I came to this country. So when I came now to this country, it is a whole new atmosphere. I need to look for something to do. Of course, I could not just immediately get back a job in my domain that I came from, for my country. 
I had an opportunity to work in a warehouse as a quality assurance specialist. Being a quality assurance specialist in the fruit industry, in the food industry, I was making sure that the fruits that our company produced, they go out at the right temperature because when you're producing fresh fruit, the temperature matters a lot. If the temperature is high, that product is prone to um, uh, inc uh, incubating or let me say getting bad or spoiling. Let me use that simple word. So I was making sure that the fruits that we produce go out at the right temperature. I was making sure that the packaging that those fruits were being packaged inside have the right instruction for people to read. For example, we were producing yogurt. We had another section that was producing yogurt. Now, some yogurts come with extra um, um, ingredients in them. For example, we'll put some of them will have peanuts in them. You want to make sure that the label that is being put at the back of the container of that yogurt have the right description of the content. Make sure we have the peanut is declared like allergens have been declared so that whoever is buying this product out there is able to read that this product contains allergen. All but of this, yeah, all of this work is was, was being regulated by the FDA. I'm sure most of you, if you're in here in the US or in Canada, you will know about FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. So that was just kind of like the nature of my job, making sure that the products, the fresh fruits we produce the yogurt and every other thing that we're producing are being produced as per regulations and are being sent out as expectation to meet the customer's needs. So that was the kind of, that was kind of like the nature of my job. All of this were, were being done and then we had to document it in a central system so that when the government comes for their audit, we are able to present our data to them clean and clear. They are able to see it check on it and then, you know, validate us during audits, validate us if we are clean or if everything is falling within expectations or regula uh, regulatory standards. And when we are lacking or falling short, they will tell us, okay, we found this, you need to correct this, you need to work on this and stuff like that. So that it was kind of like the nature was, of my job. Yeah. So Francesca, it means that there was no IT involved at that time, but no, 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 no. Yeah, I mean, that, that that is very important because a lot of people who are working in warehouses or having different IT job, they actually uh, they actually always get scared to be in IT because they don't they don't find that opportunity. Uh, and one more thing, uh, one, mm -hmm. one more one last question, Francisca, because we have to move on. Uh, so, right. one, so, uh, so I, I'm sure that this is a work from home opportunity, right? Or is it an hybrid opportunity what you're working right now? 100% work from home. Wow. <laughs> I love your answers. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Francisca. I'm sure, I'm sure there are many people who must be having uh, goosebumps or uh, they are ready for, for, you know, to be in IT, I'm sure. So how many of you uh, would, would, would like to, you know, thank Francisca for joining us and sharing the, uh, you know, information, what she had shared and the journey, what she has been to. So would you like... I mean, do you have any question for, for Francisca? Great. So thank you so much, Francisca. We have one question for you. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So when you were applying for the job, uh, were you, uh, were you focusing on, on, on like, a uh, how, like, were you focusing on only on one role or how, or were you focusing on different roles? So I was focusing not on one specific role. The title of my, my CV was cloud and DevOps engineer, AWS cloud and DevOps engineer. Now, in my resume, I made sure that I covered most of the things that a cloud engineer does. And also I made sure that it covered the DevOps part so that if this is a, if it's, if the company that is recruiting is requesting for a DevOps person, they will find all those skills, all those tools on my resume. And if they are looking for a cloud engineer, they will find those skills or those tools on my resume as well. So I, my focus was mostly on the cloud and DevOps. So I joined the two of them in one resume and that was what I was strictly looking for. I wasn't looking for so many things at the same time. I focused on cloud and DevOps engineer. Sure. Thank you so much, Francisca. Thank you for watching. Switch from non-IT to IT today. Explore www.thinkcloudly.com.